Yo, 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 so today uh, I thought I'd do a video about preparing for your first ever gig or show or performance, whatever you want to call it, the first time you ever play in front of other human beings. Uh, something I was thinking about actually, I was watching some, it was actually a YouTube fail video and I was thinking, I'm sure this must be this band's first gig. <laughs> And I, I, it made me think of my first first gig, and although it was awesome and a lot of fun, there were a lot of lessons I had to learn along the way in order to prep well for playing in front of people. I'm not gonna talk about performance suggestions or anything like that because part of the fun of being in a band is is the journey, is is learning as you go along, and um, you know working out what works for you. Every band's different, every person's different. And it's important that you experience those things for yourselves. Um, but what I have thought about are some real practical things that might actually help you if this is your first show, you're prepping for your first gig, you're a bit nervous, um, but also excited. What's it gonna be like? What do I need to do? What do I need to prep for? Um, this hopefully might be useful to some people. Uh, this video probably isn't useful for people that have been gigging for ages. And if you just want to go in blind and, you know, learn in your own way, crack on. But if anyone wants to pick up some tips from me, well, you know, I've been playing since ancient times, you know, pre-MySpace. <laughs> that's, that's how old school uh, my gigging days go back. Yeah, I just thought I'd chuck some ideas out there. So, tip number one for anyone who's playing their first gig. Get in contact with the venue and find out your set times, handover times and what equipment is there um, and what you need to bring. That, this is this is important and it helps build up that repertoire with the venue already. You're thinking proactively, you know how long you've got, you can anticipate changeovers, you know you can work out if you need to bring all your gear or if you, if you can share equipment some places. Also make sure you find out about load-in times as well. Um, the logistics of organising bands is a nightmare and if you're that late band We'll get to that point in a minute. Tip number two, once you know how long you've got set wise, make sure you stick to that time, practice your set in rehearsal and factor in things like guitar changes, factor in gaps in between songs. Um, if you're a bit uncomfortable in front of people, you might even want to plan some little things that you want to say to the crowd in those awkward gaps because I don't know. You might be you might be comfortable just standing there tuning your guitar with a bit of silence. Some some bands are like that, and it depends on your style of band. But if you're a bit conscious that there might be some gaps in between songs, make sure you rehearse your set within your allotted time frame and factor in those gaps. Because I've I know I've seen bands before where it's obviously their first gig and those awkward moments where they'll get on the mic and be like hands up if you like cereal yeah do you know what I mean like um, and the crowd's standing there like no I don't like cereal actually bottom line is once you got your set time rehearse that you know top to bottom set a timer we've got half an hour set go okay and then kick in your first track and make sure you stick to time that's that's number three stick to time no one's happy at a gig if bands don't stick to time. You annoy everyone. You annoy the promoters, the sound man, the other bands, the people that have come to see the bands, because uh, typically venues will put up timings. If you don't stick to time, it the knock-on effect is massive. You don't want people getting annoyed with you on local gigging cir circuits. Um, so stick to time. That is That is a really big one. And if you have a moment in the set where the guitar doesn't work or you, you, you've broken a drum skin or whatever and that has to change, tough. Like you're going to have to just play whatever you've got left time wise. If you have to cut out a song, you cut out a song, it doesn't matter, you just stick to time. Yeah, so always stick to time. So we've talked a lot about, you know, rehearsing and performance. Some of the rules I would recommend for that, but actually, if it's your first gig, and actually this goes for any gig from this point forward, always try and turn up early to the venue if you can. 
um, and just make yourself known, like be friendly to all the people front of house. So the bar staff, the promoter, the sound man, lighting, whoever's there, other bands, make sure you're cool. Um, Cause at the end of the day, these are the people that are gonna help you create the best performance possible. And trust me, I've seen that if you're a dickhead to the sound man, they're gonna make sure you sound horrendous. I've seen bands like it, you know, and word of mouth spreads. Um, if you're just a local up and coming band and your, your bassist is an absolute twat, that's gonna get around. So always be cool. Remember, you're just people playing music. You won't be the first person to do it, you won't be the last person. So don't act like you're holier than thou just because you're a person that's playing music in front of people. Always be cool, we're all people. Treat people, you know, with respect. Treat just basic common courtesy it can go a long, long way. And in fact, they might even do, if, if you buy their sound man a drink or lighter man a drink, you're winning all day. <laughs> so prior to the gig, you want to do some really essential checks. So you found out what time your set is, you found out how long your set is. You need to factor in changes or whatever if you have guitar changes or um, whatever instrument changes. What you need to do is check your gear top to bottom. So that means if you've got, <laughs> I was guilty of this, my guitar strings used to break all the time in rehearsal, which didn't really matter too, too much. But the high E used to break all the time. And um, what I did is I made sure to get my guitar set up um, and that fixed the problem, which meant come gig time, we were good to go. Um, and that goes the same for leads. So look, if I show you my uh, pedal board, what I tend to do, is I plug my guitar in and I just, as I'm playing, gently move any of the leads. Because if you've got any dodgy connections, you'll hear it and you'll it'll give you an opportunity to replace any leads that are faulty. And I do the same with all your, your full length leads if, if you're uh, not using wireless. Just check all your equipment, make sure it's all working well ahead of time, so, you know, two weeks before the gig, just always make sure all your equipment's in working order. Drummers, bassists, singers, make sure your microphone's not, not crackling or, or cutting out. Um, bass players, just make sure your bass is making bass sounds. I don't know, whatever bassists do to check it. <laughs> Same as a guitar, I guess. Drummers, make sure your drum kit isn't moving around all over the shop and bring a, you know, bring a bit of carpet if you need to keep it still because you don't know what the venue's gonna have. Another important thing is spare equipment. So anything can happen in a live performance. I always make sure I have a spare guitar. I mean, I normally use two guitars anyway, so I've always got a back, normally a backup. Make sure you've got spare everything really, so that you're prepared for any eventuality. For, for example, guitarist, always make sure you've got spare strings, spare strap, spare guitar, a spare, depending on what amp you're using, you might even need a new, a spare head or, if you've got a valve amp, you know, valves, um, and you know, that goes for kind of bass as well. Make sure you've got spare, all those things spare. Uh, drummers, make sure you've got spare skins, spare sticks. Oh, oh yeah, guitarists, obviously, spare plectrums. Singer, make sure your mic isn't cutting out or crackly or faulty, um, and make sure all the connections are solid. And same with any instrument. If there's a potential thing, something could go wrong, make sure you've got a spare for backup. And imagine playing your first gig something going wrong in the middle of the first song and that's it. You, you know, if, if, if your bassist ba breaks a string or your amp cuts out, that's it, your set's knackered. That, that's, that's a horrible feeling to be fair. So just always remember your spares and yeah, check your gear. Make sure it's all up, up to par come day of the gig. So let's talk a bit about sound check. If you've never played a gig before, Sound check is an alien experience, but basically what they'll do is when you get up on stage and everyone plugs in, the sound man at the front, he will be controlling the speakers that the audience hears and make sure everything sounds good. And what that means is you can't just ramp your amp up on stage because it'll overpower whatever the audience hear at the front. So, you, so listen to the sound man. Um, and you will typically, in, in a lot of venues, you'll have monitors, so you'll be able to hear um, the mix in whatever way you feel happy with. When you're having sound check, make sure first of all you've got a song that you know you're going to use for sound check, whatever that is, as long as it, it incorporates a, um, a general vibe of your sound. 
And also, be honest. If you can't hear something in your mix, tell the sound man, because once you get on stage, if you haven't told them at sound check, you're not gonna hear it on stage, and the sound changes when a room is full of people as well. So if you know you want to hear lots of the singer, and and you're not getting that in your monitors, you need to tell the sound man, I need more singer, okay? I need more singer in my mon vo vocals in my monitor. Um, and same, same with all the other instruments. If you're bass playing you're, and you want more guitar in your monitor, you need to tell the sound man. And listen to what the sound man's saying. Yes, it might be annoying if, if the, the sound man's saying, could you just turn your amp down a bit? Remember, it's the audience that will be hearing the overall sound. And if it sounds crap up front, doesn't matter how good you think it sounds behind you, get your mix right in the monitors and you'll be ready for a good show. But yeah, you know, prepare for your sound check. Know what song you want and be honest with the sound man. And be quick, try not to take forever on sound check. No one likes it when um, bands are there for four hours talking about, can I get more violin, please? I need, I need half a decibel more violin now. The key thing is with all these transition phases, load in, sound check, changing in between bands, it's just got to be quick. So that's why prepare it. Like, even you could even practice that in rehearsal, like loading your gear in. You know, get set. <laughs> if you want to be, you know, super specific, set yourself a timer, right? We know we, we've got 15 minutes to get our gear on and off stage. Set a timer, 15 minutes, what can we do? <laughs> Literally, these things this sounds really weird, but. Until you start gigging regularly, you won't find your rhythm um, in this process. So if you've never done it before and it feels a bit like, oh my God, what do I do? Practice it. Um, everyone will thank you for doing it and um, it'll go a long way to others' perception of you as a band as well, at least from my experience. Now, we've talked a lot about preparation, um, getting gear on stage, rehearsing. When it comes to showtime, this is where all your hard work, all your practice, all the songs you might have written or rehearsed are being played in front of people for the first time. I'm not going to tell people how to perform. Um, people go to live gigs to see different things, people perform because it's a way to express their art. So I'm not going to tell you what to perform, but just remember, for me at least, and I'm old school, so don't get me wrong, young people might not want to see bands that interact with the crowd, but. <laughs> One of my favourite things about live gigs is the interaction between performer and crowd and that, that, that energy that goes on at a live show. So if you are performing to people, try your best to face the crowd. Bit of eye contact always goes a long way. But yeah, as long as you're being honest and true to yourself as a musician or artist or whatever you want to call it, I'm not going to tell you what to perform, but I just remember there are people there to see you and if you can share some some of that energy for me that's that's awesome yeah just remember people have paid money to see you even if it is your mum and your mates <laughs> and be yourself you know that honesty comes across as well you can tell when bands are putting it on or just being a bit conceited and you know be yourself you you are there to share what you can do, your passion. So just be yourself. And another tip is mistakes. Live music has so many variables. There's so many opportunities for things to go wrong. But actually, it's about how you manage that in the moment. If you play a wrong chord or miss a beat on the drum kit or hit a wrong note or, or sing a, the wrong part of a song, and you're an originals band playing for the first time, no one's gonna care. <laughs> no one's gonna notice. This is the first time they've heard your songs. If you've made a mistake that you can just crack on with, don't draw attention to it, just play on. Well, we play, I'll, t I'll tell you one story about this actually. The band I was last in, we played a gig where this guitar, this guitar broke a string and unfortunately, when this guitar breaks strings, it drops the whole guitar down like a, a key, <laughs> like a half step. So I carried on playing. The bassist was looking over confused. Um, he carried on playing the normal note. So I tried to catch up with him whilst playing a bit further up the guitar. 
He then heard that I had dropped down a step, so he tried to drop down a step. And basically, the whole song, we were out of sync with each other the whole time. But we just carried on playing, just carried on as best we could. <laughs> and to us, the people that wrote the song, it was a shit show. We, we had a bit of eye contact during the set and we, while I was playing we were like, what? Basically, what the hell are we doing here? The drummer, I could see the drummer like wincing. The singer, I don't know, he, you know, I don't know what he was doing. But anyway, we played this song. It was an, it was horrendous, but we played it, played the song, finished it, whatever. Anyway, after the set, I asked people, I asked a couple of my friends and asked, oh, did you notice that song in the middle, like where it went wrong? And they were all like, no, what? <laughs> we were like, yeah, you know, when we were like completely out of key and they were like, no, it didn't sound all right to us. <laughs> And it, honestly, it couldn't have been it couldn't have been worse. So, take solace in the fact that you can basically play whatever the hell you want, and no one's going to notice. <laughs> so, if there's a mistake, don't draw attention to it. If you hit a wrong note in a solo, my tip is just to bend it. And if it gets to the point where you are completely lost, then that's that that can actually turn into a moment. You know. I've played songs where I've started a song and the bassist isn't quite ready, so he'll just say, yo, 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 hold up, and then it'll cut. And actually, we just kick back in with it. That's fine. No one's going to kill you if you make a mistake, but what people will do is they will notice every time you pull a weird face if you make a mistake, or just go, ooh, or, or even have a go. I've, I've seen bands where they've been like, you're playing the wrong note, Dave. The singer's actually said, like, you're playing the wrong note. I'm like, no one knew that until you said it. So yeah. Mistakes are part and parcel of life performance, um, and actually they can um, they can create quite cool moments in gigs as well. So yeah, don't stress about making mistakes. Particularly, you know, this is your first gig. You're go you're gonna make mistakes. It's how you learn. Um, another really practical tip that you might not necessarily have thought of is label literally everything. Anything you bring, label it. People will take stuff. Things will go missing and we all know music equipment is not cheap you need to make sure you label everything try and store your stuff in, in the most secure place possible and when i say label everything i mean if you bring like a power adapter label that leads label your leads pedal boards make sure your pedal boards kind of labeled up um, guitars everything drum skins drum pedals every literally anything microphones whatever you're bringing you need to label because this stuff will go missing as much as uh, we like to think everyone in bands is honourable and uh, understands the struggle of being a musician there are those people out there that they don't give a damn they're going to take your lead if you leave it so label it yeah everything make sure you look after your stuff yeah at the end of the gig similar to when you arrive in the venue say just a thank you to the promoter um, the sound guy, the light man, the bands. Um, this is your, essentially gigs are an opportunity to network. You want to you want to see if you can get another gig in the future, or you might even be able to jump on some gigs with the other bands. Just those little positive interactions can make all the difference and change your direction as a band in terms of where you play gigs, gig opportunities, things like that. Um, so basic common courtesy, because um, like I said earlier, word of mouth spreads. If you're a dickhead, no one wants to play with you. All right. Whilst editing this video, I realised I forgot a really, really important thing to mention, and that's earplugs. Make sure you wear these at every rehearsal, every gig. Don't be like me when I was 15, playing with crazy distortion, putting my head next to a speaker. When you're young, you don't really care about losing your hearing, um, but it'll happen if you do things like that. It feels weird when you first start wearing earplugs, but once you get used to them, It'll be all good to so make sure you wear them every gig, every rehearsal. Don't go deaf. Being deaf is not fun. Not that I'm deaf, but I can just presume it's not fun. All right, so don't do it. Wear earplugs. The main thing about your first live gig is try and have as much fun as possible. Playing music is about having fun. It's about um, being able to express yourself and the, the, the thing you've been creating. Um, in front of people so try your best to enjoy it as much as possible um, and yeah you're gonna learn you're gonna make mistakes that's part of being a human um, when you're doing something new um, but hopefully these little tips will help you 
in your first ever show, first ever gig, whatever you want to call it. And um, just make that little bit of difference, make it a little bit easier when you do get to that moment where you're like, yeah, I'm ready to play uh, Smoke on the Water in front of people now. So yeah, I hope that's helpful. Let me know what you thought. Let me know if, if you're coming up to your first gig. Let me know if you've played a million gigs and you think I'm chatting a load of rubbish. Don't forget, my first gig was a long time ago. So things could have changed, you know. There might be something that I missed out on um, in terms of the practical side of preparing for a gig. Let me know if I missed anything. It'd be great to hear your thoughts and if there's something that I haven't considered because I'm sure I've missed plenty of things, but this is all I can think off the top of my head right now. But yeah, I hope this has been useful. Thank you once again for watching and yeah, just take it easy people.